Must be good because I don't understand what you have. That's be curious. Is, so those who aren't present, uh, let's see. Oh, meeting has started. We can get Gabby there. Um, so I say hi. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Keith Johnson. For those who don't know me, <laughs> and we watched Becky' uh, reaction to trying Ben Mike for the first time. Um, <laughs> it's nasty. And, uh, <laughs> like I said, I <laughs> we should all try it. I want with me my partner in crime. You don't uh, need a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with my partner in crime, Angie, uh, my wife, and uh, probably companion to this adventure, along with my kid Harley. We had a good time. We were in Australia for five weeks, and uh, we'll share with you some of our adventures. We boiled down the thousands of photos to something we think will fit in an hour, but will you speed up, slow down? We added some bonus money bandwidth at the end of it, <laughs> run through all of our shots. Um, so, and, I, and Angie's here to help me because I don't remember the names of all the places, birds, and wildlife and things that we saw, but she does. Um, so she's going to help me uh, recall the place we went. So we flew into Sydney, and I think the coolest thing about going to Australia is that you uh, lose a day on the way over. You cross the international day line. So we left on the 27th and arrived on the 29th. So we didn't have a 28th of June. And on the way back, we left on August 3rd from Sydney and arrived in the United States before we left Australia. <laughs> so you start planning, you know, you got to time back, but it was a really strange experience to have your calendars and clocks do that to you. We allowed a lot of time to adjust to the time zone change, um, which is almost like day and night from here. So our first shot is in Australia, where we did a walkthrough. We're adjusting the time zones. It's in Botanical Gardens, right in the heart of the city. And city. Sydney. Fly be free. We have more trackers. You don't have to eat those. <laughs> I know Irene does an amazing job, but we can uh, we can wait. There's more here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that didn't spill. Here. All right, let's see the next one. Let's see where we go with Mary. Oh, yeah. All right. So, inside the city, we encountered some of our first wildlife. Do you remember this kind of one? Yeah, it's a water guy. How big? Almost two feet long when you go tip to tail. Yeah. So, but greeted nicely right away. Mm. So, magpie lark. It looks like a magpie. You know, you were actually in Sydney, so your your landmark of the city. The water taxis are great. Yeah, you get and around the city with water taxis all over the place. And the architecture of the city was really cool too. It's like a waterfall and cascades down in a circle with the walkways and the kingdom cars. It was cool. This is all of us adjusting to being like mm. day and night and day gone. So, our first trip out of the city was into the Blue Mountains. Blue Mountains is uh ecological preserve national park just west of Sydney. And um, a lot of our tours were guided toward trips to the park. And um, Talk a little bit about this one here. So this is like showing off of the crazy like age of these things there. You start to realize of just how ancient everything is up there when you start seeing what reminds you of the old original um, gymnosperms and angiosperms and crazy things just look very different. Yeah, right? flowers and, and plant life. Flowering cone. Took a lot of getting used to. I think the oldest rocks in the world are from Australia. Yeah, right? oldest forests, oldest rocks. Yeah, yeah, oldest trees. Some trees that you haven't seen only in fossils, they found alive in patches of never not uh, How's that bedroom? Oh, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew that before. before. <laughs> so the geologic uh, feature called okay. the Three Sisters, where the, the, the tour guide would stop and tell us there's, there's native stories associated with them. And, Three sisters that um, violated tribal rules that came and shrined in stone. Action. 
Beautiful. And then uh, from Sydney, and I, I've laid out some maps kind of showing the way we did this. We flew up to Brisbane, and of course, uh, to stay was at the Australian Zoo, um, set up by Steve Irwin and his family, um, who's a major conservationist uh, and philanthropist in Australia. And our kid had just been dying to pet a wombat, so we got to get it. Long that encounter, and uh, these guys, uh, if you haven't ever read my favorite children's story, is Diary of a Wombat. It is like the coolest Australian awesome story, which was one of Harley's stories growing up. And their their butt is like this solid plate, and they perch inside their den. And when an enemy sticks their head in, they slam their butt up on it and crush its skull against the inside of their cat their cavern. So. Uh, I really thought it was the coolest experience to be in there. <laughs> and then in traveling the zoo, we did completely by chance have an opportunity to run into uh, Steve Sperlman's family. Uh, his son, um, whose photography book is floating around on the table, we were just enamored by it. And his wife, Terry, who, you know, this is where Steve got his start as a crocodile hunter, if many of you aren't, you know, remember this guy from the night. Crikey, you're a naughty crocodile. <laughs> Uh, so his, his son and, and wife were uh, doing a crocodile show the kind of year. It was a pretty awful experience. He was killed by what, right? See the guy that was right, killed, yeah. killed by a stingray. Killed like a stingray. Right we, to the heart. Through the heart. And we went to the bay that he actually um, was swimming with the stingrays during the film when he took that bay to sting. But uh, that's cool. So and they're Andrew also Robert setting here. a whole bunch of that bay um, aside into a, um, a, sanct a wildlife sanctuary reserve in that area. And so they're they're doing a lot of they're gonna stop with it. Where are we on this one? Then we, now, then we went to the Everglades. The, <laughs> the only other Everglades on the planet. There's only two Everglades. What makes it Everglades is that it has a lot of grasses and um waterways that go all throughout this. So this basically has a lot of the same characteristics of the Everglades in Florida, except that it is in um in Australia. So we went on different boat trips, but where we stayed was right at uh, Noosa Habitat, and it is um, glamping, basically, but you can all bring your own camper. You can stay there, too. We glamped, and the kangaroos were right there. Like white tail deer, part of us. The, the kangaroos are literally everywhere. Come on. <laughs> And it just was fascinating to, to be part of that. Oh, wow. This is where the birds were amazing. Mm -hmm. um, starting with those rainbow lorikeets. If you've ever gone to a zoo and you can feed them, well, this is where they are wild, and there's much more of them out in the wild. Cool. Traveling through the Everglades, I book. Kingfisher? It is. The largest kingfisher is a kookaburra. kookaburra. So, yeah. Kookaburras were really, they were right there in most of their sound, of which many people are familiar, which is pretty crazy, um, happens just before sunrise. So, especially when you're camping, even if it's glamping. Oh, she keeps up in the <laughs> <laughs> like 30 acres full of kookaburras. <laughs> <laughs> And just kangaroos. Oh, and oh, gray kangaroos. You know, that's just on the same land right there. So, so. Um, and then from there, we started at the very southern end of um, the big park. Well, the big park. Kagari. Great Barrier Islands. Oh, great and Barrier. so we went to Kagari. And so we'll show you, like, this this is just the east coast of Australia. Um, the distance between Sydney and here is the same as Orlando to uh, Bangor, right? Mm -hmm. And so we flew into here, and then flew up to Brisbane, that Sydney, Brisbane, and then we drove all the way up to here where the road ends here. And in order to do this, it's four wheel drive only, no power, mm -hmm. no gas, no fuel off-road vehicles only. And so we're about here in this adventure at this point in our trip. Um, just, a, just a little bit north of Brisbane. Kagari is the largest sand island 
What was that, Becky? I was just going to say, I remember you were talking about having learned how to drive on the other side of the road. Oh, on the other side of the car. I practiced drawing on paper months before, like what intersections would look like and where cars would be stationed. <laughs> and they used rotaries every. Oh, so, like, I mean, any normal four way intersection of harbor would be a rotary, mm -hmm. even if it was on a 10 foot diameter. <laughs> So this was on Kagari. Yeah. And so they changed, they've changed a lot of the names of the places back to the native names. Um, you can barely tell that that is a stream with the sand bottom because the water is that clear. Huh. It's really quite amazing. With the shallow vegetation. And not only was it reinforced on the islands, but of course it's all beach around the edges. So an old storm wreck. A little more intact on the old tag. <laughs> uh, you can play a little bit and then we'll skip it just to save for time. Dingo. Uh, dingoes would rock right up on the beach. This is a wild one, but they know people would fish. And uh, the fisherman, what he's doing is he's dragging that bait bag. It has rotten fish in it or fish that he's caught. He drags along the sand. And when worms come up to grab it, he reaches down, grabs the worm, and pulls it up. And it's a foot and a half long. And then they cut it up and use it as bait. We we're completely fascinated by this catching of it, but so was the dingo. It was like, ah, that looks pretty tasty. I guess you know Just imagine really big blood worms from around here. Yeah, they're like our blood worms. White bellied sea eagle mm. and whales. <laughs> so the humpbacks coming to their um, breeding and calving areas. So almost the opposite of what we see here, because we see them in their feeding grounds. And then the Whitsundays. Whitsundays, some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Um, these are out, uh, part of the Great Barrier. Yeah, Beach, south of the Great Southern Barrier. White Haven Beach. And private boats, you know, tours. Stingrays. Oh, that's and amazing beaches. Yeah, it has to be one of the most amazing scenes we've ever shot and guide around this place. I mean, this isn't very far from this room that is But the bays were full of stingrays. And, uh, and the land. As, as we went for lunch, they said, watch out for the guanas. <laughs> said, what? <laughs> and then this guy wandered out the floor while we were sitting there. And, uh, Nobody moved, and so he wasn't really sure we were even there until he saw Harley's foot. He said it's in Guana or he, Guana. So it's they a call them Guanas. So the basically the um land monitor lizards, right. monitor right. lizards. So they're big. Are they poisonous? Oh, if they no. bite you or anything? No. I mean, they can cause infections, animals. just like any animal bite. Yeah. Yeah. Not really venomous. So yeah. That's Harley's cool. foot that people scared him. <laughs> um, sunsets, amazing. Since we are on that. Mm -hmm. We went out, probably one of my favorite parts of the adventure was we went out and stayed on a moored float at the Great Barrier Reef. And uh, so there's only 18 people stay overnight, but during the day, it's like cruise ship industry. Hundreds of people come out and snorkel and swim and um, but we stayed on this boat for two nights. Um, and when people left, we all got to actually go scuba diving uh, as a family. And in addition to the snorkeling all around, the wildlife was spectacular. It was great for the scuba diving because their instructors there all had their certification that if we did not have our certification, we could still go scuba diving. And that was really amazing. So, and that's where we slept. <laughs> On the pontoon. Um, it started that night blowing a gale. So it was a little noisy, but it's still pretty cool. <laughs> and then the sunset. And it lights on the other side of the boat so you can look out these windows in the bottom of the pontoon. And the pontoon actually has 
two suites that are all the way down to, uh, down underneath with two walls that are all glass. Mm -hmm. So you could just watch everything kind of coming and going. That's not where we stayed, but they had some underwater viewing. So a lot of really cool fish, including big groupers that you would only see pretty much at night. At night, yeah, a lot of groupers. This guy's like four to five feet long. He likes right. to hide out under the pontoon during the day. And these were the girls, yeah. which are smaller than the guys. <laughs> they had the working pontoon that was nearby. That's where um, Mr. Grouper liked to hang out. So we didn't see Mr., but we saw several big females. The, the barge, the, front, the boat around periodically, so that they're not affecting, you know, the, the area or reef. It's not that they do. Well, no, it's a pontoon. It is actually, well, they were grandfathered way back. It doesn't yeah. really move. Oh, it okay. stays right onto um, there. So um, it's at Hardy Reef, which is 40 miles um, from land. Um, and it pretty much stays right there. Mm -hmm. So um, they're trying to just say they one inclusion, there. just stay one place, everything else kind of grows around it, moves around it. Um, it seems to be working. Yeah. Um, and then from there, we went on up to Cairns and driving up. Here. Now we're looking at almost the middle of the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, still lots of rainforests. Lots of water <laughs> and bats. We got our first introduction to bats when we were in Cairns. Um, these are spectacled flying foxes. We had no idea. Okay. All the research we did on birds, they didn't say bats. bats. And, uh, You'll see in a little bit. We yeah. saw some bats. Oh. This is a Brahmini kite. Just amazing. It was a great sight as we were heading up there. Um, mm -hmm. Lots of cockatoos. Cockatoos wild all over the place. They're like squirrels. Mm -hmm. They're also as much as a nuisance to the locals, to they the natives. Boats, everything. And so um, they're not really completely psyched as natives that they have all come back because they're that much of a nuisance. Um, and can cause a lot of real damage if you know anything about parrots and cockatoos. But just, it's amazing to see these parrots out there wild. It was one of the things I really looked forward to, and I was not regret it. Um, from there, we also went up into the Daintree Rainforest, which is one of the oldest rainforests. And there's no, beyond here, the roads is all four wheel drive only or boat access. The last gas station and stuff are right at the Daintree. Yeah. Lots of waterways, snakes, crocs, little and big, <laughs> and more bats. Little more bats. And then when we were offshore, uh, we probably did about five boat tour, um, tours along the barrier reef to get out onto the reef and explore. Right off the back of the boat here, we had some uh, black tipped reef sharks um, and fat fish. Um, yes, Harley, our kid, did actually go in the water and swim with them. <laughs> We're on our way back from a snorkel and we waited until they kind of came back around. We had some video of them swimming around the back of the boat. It's really cool. It's really cool. And spiders. Lots and lots of spiders. I should have brought some quotes like uh, Bill Bryson's in a sunburned country. If you want to read a really funny book about Australia, it sits right up and if it everything around it will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> these guys, how big are these guys? They're about like that big around. So we're looking at about a six inch diameter from the edge of, of legs to the other. I mean, it, they're big. And this was right outside a, a visitor center. So they kind of cordon their habitat so that they can have these golden orb weavers. Mm. And yes, Keith found a rock. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Is that Darwin? Yeah. Yeah. So then we, after we were done with the Daintree, we're back down at Cairns and then flew over the middle of the country to what we would say is the beginning of the Red Desert tour and started our way south. Darwin is about 12 degrees south of the equator. And in the winter there, it was 91 degrees during the day. And in the cool, dry season. Summer. Mm. Why we went in the winter. Two reasons why we went in the winter. It's not stinger season, as they say. So sting is out there. Um, which you don't have to wear the wetsuits to keep you from getting killed by jellyfish. Um, so we flew into Darwin up in here, and then we drove down through the heart of the desert into here to Uluru National Park, and uh, we'll, we'll take you through that week, that set of the adventure. That was, this was about two weeks long. This was sunset up into the Indian Ocean. So this was definitely our first exploration to Indian Ocean. As we went into, from there, we went to Kakadu, uh, which is, starts right on the coast, but goes inland, and mud skippers. Mm -hmm. So. I'm born for sure. But I, I saw you had that earlier. Yeah. We ran into a, a, uh, a native on the board. He loved my story of our national parks here so much. He gave me the shirt off his back. He <laughs> <laughs> his back with you. <laughs> <laughs> he was one of the elders of the aboriginals that were um, basically, they were given back the ownership of the land and a lot of the national parks. And there's a lot of that going on in Australia. It's really quite amazing. Um, so yeah, one of his biggest, you know, things that he wanted is not only give the sh literally the shirt off his back, um, but also was just like spread it, just keep talking about it and spread it along. So um, it was really quite incredible. He roomed right next to us while we stayed in Kakadu. And then from there, there is uh, inside the waterways is known as um, the Yellow Bill Billabong, which is one of the best places to bird um, in Australia. And that is a sea eagle right at sunrise. And we went on a nice little boat trip. The dingoes were even out on the waterways alongside the edges, some more dingoes. Um, a lot of places, not only do you have egrets right next to spoonbills, right next to ducks, right next to herons. Uh, so, um, it was really quite amazing. And yes, more crocs, lots and lots of crocs. We also came across, um, ants who will bend the leaves to make their nest. Yeah, so they cool so, us up, they're all inside of it. And we just see this guy here. This is actually one of the ones they eat. The belly's full of honey. And there is. Mm. Uh, quite tasty, actually. <laughs> uh, but you, you threaten the nest and they'll boil up, pinchers up, ready to come at you. And, and you'd have the waterway with all the water birds, but then there's basically dry glasses right next to it. So this is a, um, a wallaby right in the middle um, with all the birds. Um, a lot of plumed whistling ducks, a lot of herons and egrets, termites, lots of termite mounds all the way down through the red center. Um, and then we went to Nick Mulek um, National Park, which is outside Catherine. So we're getting a little more, and these were big river gorges um, that some still have water running all the way through it and some do not. So we went on another trip, and then this is where we found bats. These are all little red flying foxes. Um, you could see them all throughout the day, but of course they took off at dusk. Um, hundreds of thousands. These are all bats. I figured easily hundreds of thousands is probably one of the most incredible wildlife experience I have ever had in my life. Was just so many bats. The park staff said they don't choose the same place each year to stay. They'll they might be here a year or two. They actually cause a tremendous amount of devastation to the, to the plant life. Um, so they move their habitats around. Um, but they consider it like to be a great honor actually to have them all there for that period of time that they are, and they never know when to set up all these groups next. But it's uh, it's really quite something. 
How do they damage the vegetation? They all hang on so many branches, and the feces mat the forest floor like wanna like just thick, and the odor like you do not like being downwind. But this, you know, this is hundreds of acres filled with hundreds of thousands of bats. The crocs will sit in the waterway and wait for the branch to break because there's so many on it, and then they will pitch into the water and it's snack time for everything below. Um, it it just you can't walk through there or near there, and, and then they just they're constantly fighting for the best perches, and they just end up defoliating so many of the trees. It comes back it's just that. Um, we had no idea, like you and you were walking, deer, you know, fighting for perches and during the day, and they said, "We'll come back at sunset," and they all take off. Right? And then we discovered that um, the springs in the area create streams. I think the most, the strangest thing of it all is we started seeing all these families with bull noodles in the desert, like sticking out of car windows, everywhere we went, parking lots were full of pool noodles, and we're like, what are you all doing with pool noodles? And we discovered all these, uh, these they're hot springs that feed all these rivers that boil out of the limestone, and there's so much fun with pool noodles. You know, you see. You can go for thousands of feet on these streams, and they said, it's always safe to go in there if somebody else is already swimming. <laughs> That's how they that's how you know if the crocodiles are around. Most of the places have signs that say, don't swim here unless somebody else already is. <laughs> uh, this was a geologic feature called Devil's Marbles. I do think this is some of the oldest stone on the, yeah. on the mountain. You can also tell how we're getting into the red sand. Really red rocks, red sand. We did go on an adventure. Small ones, so like, you know, we, we joke about tourists using their GPSs up here to find their destination. Uh, never recommend doing it like you do need maps. This GPS told us the shortest way to go to the destination was three hours shorter than the route. We just didn't know there was no pavement for 80 miles. <laughs> um, and the road's not maintained, and we were in a route car, and I'm pretty sure we're lucky not to be a statistic. Wild horses, wild camels, no cars for hours. Yeah, um, yeah. We did make it out of that, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't without its tense moments. And this this is where we ended up staying. And I think I just needed a few hours to collect my something. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that is Keith up there finding another rock. Had to capture some trail shots here. The stonework, as, as Harley and I were hiking around really close. And this is at King's Canyon. So they also have their own King's Canyon. Um, and if you're at the bottom and you do have to hike up to the top, the rocks are amazing. Um, and then also from the top of the canyon and looking down is really quite amazing. Um, and then yes, even while looking at them, where you stayed, almost everywhere where you stayed, even if it was inside the national park, they had happy hour at a bar and a restaurant. You could just sit there and watch the sunset on the canyon. And Uluru uh, National Park. You it used to be called Ayers Rock or Ayers Rock. Um, this huge monolithic sandstone intrusion where the Australian landscapes wrote down is another sister feature to to fall down. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, but it's phenomenal. And so half of it is off limits to the public. It's uh, still a sacred place. You're not allowed to touch it. Um, we were there. The natives did a, a laser show presentation that tells the story of the place, which was really an odd concept, like to think they were doing this laser show presentation with drones in this native sacred space, but they collectively thought it was probably the best way to tell their story about um, the proof about creation and the story of creation and the native stories um, moved through the continent. So you only got a piece of the story when you were in that area geographically, which was really, really fascinating. And here at this dinner, we had a dinner of all um, native foods, um, it was kind of like a, a charcuterie board of all kinds of stuff to eat. It was really pretty cool. 
Um, and the light show was all done with drones. Mm -hmm. So it was really quite yeah, amazing. Can't take yeah, you can't take any photos or anything of it. They're very protective of it, but it was amazing. Mm -hmm. So that's at us at the platform. <laughs> and we got to see not only sunset on it, but also the next morning sunrise. And then of course to go right to it. So the only spot they let you go up on my hands on. Yeah. And then, and then once we were done at Uluru, we went right back to Sydney. And we stayed right at Bondi Beach. So it was a perfect full moon setting and rising. While we were there, there was a lot of surf. <laughs> So. You get to swim in this. There weren't any sharks that day either. Yeah. So that's a quick run through of like the continent of Australia on the east side. <laughs> Sit through it pretty quick. Um, we threw in some photos of animals uh, just to highlight some of the other species afterwards. And uh, you know, if folks have any questions, how's that Vegemite? Anybody else have any? Yeah, there's some Vegemite if anybody's interested. I recommend you all try it. That? What's the point of that? I never had it. I actually haven't had it yet. I'm waiting to see what you guys like. <laughs> 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 okay, I never felt the need to have it. I am going to have some today with you all. Good. We'll try it. Um, yeah, it was a fascinating adventure. Uh, What's this? What's this pattern? So this is a crimson rosella. I mean, it just as expected, the wild parrots were just amazing. And they don't have hummingbirds. No. So they don't have any kind of hummingbirds, but their pollinators are these honey eaters. Mm -hmm. And they probably have, well, across the entire continent, probably close to about 100 different species. Um, so this is a blue faced. Just getting right, yeah, yeah, a blue faced honey eater getting right into the flowers. More of the rainbow lorikeets at sunset. Mm -hmm. um, it was much like um, some other birds, they go out and about during the day, and at night they all congregate. And so, in many places where we were on that um, east coast and in Queensland, um, Anywhere along the water, esplanades, any of it, they just were there by the hundreds. Um, so they were pretty amazing. Um, red beaked dotterel, dotterel, um, chicanas, um, the one good black cockatoo that I was able to get a photo of. Did get to see a couple others, but not enough to get photos. Corellas, again, more parrots. So Corellas, yes, Keith likes to call everything else what they're not, but what it reminds him of. So this is the Corellas, as in from the 101 Dalmatian. That's easy to The white bellied sea eagles. Um, they're pretty much the white bellied sea eagles are pretty much just as prominent as bald eagles are here now. Uh, so we got to see quite a few of them. They're quite amazing. Um, again, that did go out on the flats and cockadoo. Hunting. Just actively hunting. It was just really I cool to see them out there. Massive problem with uh, feral hogs there, too. And buffalo. And buffalo. And, and camels and horses. Yeah, the camels are not so bad around cockadoo, mm -hmm. but in the other areas, yes, definitely camels. Of that non native wild animals now. As we're teaching our kid, like, don't touch anything. <laughs> you know, a 17 year old that run around Australia, like, wants to touch everything. Like, half the stuff here is going to kill you. you <laughs> touch it. It's one of the places you say that. And Harley comes running and is like, this frog really wanted to be my friend. And he comes in, I was like, ah, is it poisonous? I don't know. That. So put it down, wash your hands, wash your hands, cane coat. You know, they and reach yes, that, it that, is that toxin it, it out of the cheeks. I'm like, no, don't take stuff off. Some snail shell on the beach is going to stab you. <laughs> um, 
some of the places that really surprised us that we really liked was when we stayed in Cairns, we stayed right on the Esplanade, right on the water. Um, and it may have been busy and a lot of, you know, the um, hotels and restaurants and everything, but the the walk that they had right around there was absolutely amazing. Um, so especially early morning birding. Um, and uh, so it was just really spectacular. Um, quite a few kingfishers, different species of kingfishers. And yes, these are all pictures that I took. Rolga, which is the only type of crane um, that they will have on the mainland. Um, one of the um, red-winged parrots. Bee eaters. And this is a ground cuckoo, known as a cuckoo. And wild parakeets. Budgies. Good old budgies. Um, those were really cool. <laughs> um, and then back to the kangaroos and the joeys, the fighting of the males, the relaxing of the males. Is that a red? The uh, it, it may be, yeah. yeah. Gallinules. Some birds are very similar, just a different subspecies. Um, these are humpback dolphins. I had to admit, I didn't even know they existed. Um, so those were really cool to see. Um, this is an apostle bird. Um, and more um, skates and rays. And a lemon shark through the water. Uh, nothing like a good old um, good sunset using a filter. Um, yes, they have boobies. <laughs> yes, these birds are called boobies. Curlews, a couple of different species. Uh, they make the craziest sounds at night. Screeching like bees being attacked. It's just like this horrific scream in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> think something's being murdered outside your tent. <laughs> Magpie goose. Here's their turkeys. Bush turkeys. The tail feathers don't fan out. They go in the same direction as the body. <laughs> and spiders. Lots and lots of spiders. We got a little fascinated with the spiders. This is one of the, not the lorikeets, but the inland Lorikeet. You can find the bird, a little grass wren of sorts. And lizards, definitely a good amount of lizards. So, a darter, kind of like an enhinga you'd see down south. But these are Australian, Australian darters. Um, the black necked storks also known as jabberoos, which is certainly one of the word of the birds that are changing their name to black net flowers. Even dragonflies. Termites. A lot of different wildlife. More spiders. <laughs> and wallabies. And the wild horses. Are on get lost that was on our get lost adventure. And good drinks. <laughs> Anybody who knows me knows there has to be a good drink. <laughs> this one looks so great. <laughs> no, 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 no. And then at the very end, when we were back in Sydney, we also, for Harley's birthday, um, had an up close and personal capybara experience. So I couldn't help but. <laughs> Throw in this cat Paris because it was really cool. Giant fuzzy rat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Yeah, anybody have any questions?
one of my favorite stories around on a riverboat with the captain. I don't know if I can still do my Australian accent, but I do good. Uh, but he said, so here's what you do. You wear these, these floaty thingies, and if you see the prop coming at the boat, for some reason the boat goes down, I want to form a circle around your, lo your loving captain here, and then when the prop comes through, throw them floaty things at him, and I'll try to get away. <laughs> They had a great all the tour guys have five lessons to me. Made every adventure hysterical. Clarify this at the beginning. I, what route did you take from Maine to Sydney? Yeah, yeah, flew to LA seven hours and then uh what was uh, 16 hours from LA to Sydney. I flew Sydney to Brisbane and then drove around for five weeks. Okay. On the wrong side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> I think the hard part of driving back on the wrong side of the road was coming back and being a passenger because now you're observing the mirror. <laughs> like, who's a passenger who walks in the rear view mirror? Now I'm car sick as a passenger because I can see all those objects moving around because when you're driving up there, you're staring at the mirror over your left shoulder. Right? It's just yeah. what a strange experience. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Are you I'm going to try the vegetables. When are you going back? As oh, soon as I can figure it out. I don't, I don't think I can get six weeks off again. <laughs> the Marine Mammal Conference is in Perth later on this year. Don't think I'm going to make it. But the western yeah. side of Australia is where we have not been yet. Mm, as I mean, well as the southern. Place. So like, even the southeastern place down to Melbourne, even down along towards Tasmania, we haven't been there yet. And then there's always New Zealand. Yeah. So, in the retirement, stuff. retirement. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I've heard. It's Wait, like most people who say you put it on a sandwich don't lose much. Yeah, they, they told me to put it on a piece of toast with a little bit of butter and a little very thin spread of vegemite. I actually, I actually like it. Yeah, some people really do. And that's okay. It's kind of like moxie. Yeah. Either you do or you don't. Could be vitamins. I'll see you after a night at Australian beer. Yeah. 